up guys welcome back to the channel um, yeah the time's finally come I'm doing my first marathon tomorrow we're officially one day out and I'm nervous but also super excited um, the last few days I've been kind of well the last few weeks I've been tapering down as you guys might know um, and let's just give you a quick breakdown like the this week I started the week, I did eight kilometers Monday, easy pace. I did eight kilometers Tuesday, easy pace Wednesday. I did a little photo shoot with my good friend Ash down at the track, and I also did um, some 800 meter repeats. Now this was two kilometers warm up, and then I did eight by 800s, and they were at my goal marathon pace. So nothing too crazy, keeping the heart rate low, and that was actually a really good session. Um, Thursday, I didn't run at all. Friday, which was yesterday, I did a five kilometer run. Today, I was thinking about doing a little shake up, shake out run, but I don't think I'm gonna do that now. I think I'm just gonna rest up all today. Um, today, priority, keep the fluids in, keep carb loading, and yeah, pretty much preserve as much energy as I can. I'm going to do a few stretches and stuff like that as well. I have had a little bit of a stiff hamstring, so I really want to make sure that's stretched today and, and good. Um, I ended up training shoulders yesterday with a mate, so I'm going to do a few shoulder exercises and stuff like that. Just make sure that's nice and loose, no tight muscles or anything there. And yeah, I'm, what I'll do this morning is pretty much show you, um, well, today in general, I'm going to show you how I prepare for this race. But I'm going to be taken down to Sydney because I will be flying to Sydney this afternoon. I think the flight's around two o'clock. Um, don't know if you can hear the rain in the background, but it's pouring down. It's sh real shitty weather today on the Gold Coast, so I'm not going to be up to too much. I'm just going to do some things around the house. Really, yeah, just chill. And then we're going to go down to Sydney. I think my mate wants to go out for dinner, so I'm also heading down with my mate Jordan. He's staying with me down in Sydney. He's doing the half marathon. So yeah, keen to take you guys along for this weekend. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video. And yeah, we're going for that sub three. So hopefully by the end of this video, I'm a happy man and we get it. And um, I'm gonna be going as hard as I can um, mentally. I think I'm in a good mental state at the moment. I'm really keen and yeah, just that's all I can think about at the moment and I know all the training that I've been doing, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be nothing compared to this race and also it's just gonna all feel like nothing if I don't give it a hundred percent. So yeah, let's get into this video guys. Um yeah, thanks for watching. Like I said, go like, subscribe. Um yeah, let's get into this vlog. Let's go smash this marathon. All right guys, I'm just in the kitchen and I've just made some breakfast. So like I said, I am carb loading at the moment for this race. I have been the last couple of days just slowly like increasing um, carbs to so I'm fueled for this race ready to go. So I've just made some oats for brekkie, nothing too crazy, but um, through the day I'll pretty much be having chicken and rice, salmon and rice. Nothing that's gonna, nothing out of the norm that's gonna like ups upset my stomach or anything like that. Just keeping it, um, Keeping it the same as what I've been eating throughout this prep and stuff like that because I don't want to upset, upset my stomach too much and stuff like that. Um, yeah, just keeping it the same. But I'm going to show you all my meals today, or as many as I can, um, just so yeah, you guys have a bit of an insight into carb loading for a marathon. All right, guys, nothing really too different for breakfast today. We got um, 60 grams of oats with some fresh strawberries cut up and some coconut flakes and honey there. And just been packing for the day, clean the fish tank out as well, but this is my second meal. It's around 10.30. We got, I'd say it's around 180 grams, 150 grams of salmon with just 260 grams of white rice and that's also just got some soy sauce on it so yeah just carbs bit of fats and protein all right guys um got my ball here we're just going to do some stretches loosen up that hamstring a bit and pretty much my hips and all that and then i'm going to show you a few shoulder pressure points that i do just mainly on my right one 
because that gets really tight and sometimes after I run for an hour or two, um, I can really start to feel that get sore. So I wanna make sure tomorrow with this marathon, I'm not gonna have any kind of soreness. I wanna make sure my hips are nice and relax. Um, yeah, no tension in those muscles and stuff like that. So I won't show you too much of this because it'll probably bore you, but um, yeah, I thought I'd show you a little insight into the day before the marathon and what I kind of do stretching wise and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, let's do it. these shoulder um, pressure points so I got the ball again it's gonna pretty much put it in here and yeah pretty much put it in the back of my shoulder it's gonna kind of release the muscles and stuff like that I've got the broomstick and I'm gonna release this left trap just gets um, super tight and if I stand like that my shoulder drops when I release the pressure in this left trap, it really brings this right shoulder back up. So it kind of relaxes that left one, brings the right one back up. So, because I don't have someone that can just give me massage all the time, we got this, I'm gonna use the end of it, I'm gonna shove it up here, and that's gonna go into that trap. Pretty hard, it does hurt, but like the other exercises after a minute or two releases so much pressure and tension in and to be honest when I'm running tomorrow it's going to make a massive difference if all my body's just aligned and I can move freely without any pain and yeah just without all tension built up. Last thing we're going to finish off with is just dead hangs so I'm going to be hanging from the bar up there and pretty much just relaxing my arms and shoulders completely really relaxing all those muscles in the deltoids and through the back of those delts and that's just kind of same thing release a lot of tension um, release a lot of muscles through my back and all, all that pretty much all i'm doing is just trying to hold on as tight as i can and the rest of my body is just going to go limp so let's do it There we have it, pre-marathon um, stretching and pressure points. So I'm gonna show you guys now what I've packed for my trip away, and then we're gonna head off to the airport and it's time to it's kind of make shit happen. <laughs> All right guys, I've been packing and I've pretty much got everything sorted, I think. Most important gear, obviously, the race gear. We've got the Nike Vapor Flyers. This is a brand new pair. I wore these the other day for like a 10 kilometer run and that is it, so brand new fresh pair. We had this belt, which I recently just got, um, and those two of these actually hang on that belt, but these are the shorts that I'm gonna be wearing and I've noticed they have loops on them as well, so that focuses in. <laughs> I may end up um, wearing those shorts and I might not need the belt, but headphones, I won't be using those while I run. Um, we got our gels there. I've got about six or seven of those there. Probably be taking around, yeah, five or six on the on the run, on the marathon. These finally came. Um, these are supposed to be amazing, so I'll let you guys know how they go. The one thing I'm worried about the most in this um, marathon is just cramps and body fatigue so that's why i'm taking plenty of fuel for this run i've got my electrolytes which i'll be taking down as well i'll be wearing that cap i've got socks i'll most likely be wearing these ones which are the two times you cushion socks um, i've found that they're better than the nike spark socks they've got more cushion we got white tights which i'll be wearing under the shorts we got a brand new white nike singlet I've got magnesium, which I'll probably have the night before and after the race as well for recovery. 
I've got Enduro here, so taking a heap of that down, which I will be putting in those bottles and also having before the race. Then we've got a little bit of pre-workout in there, which I might actually be putting a tiny bit of those for caffeine in the bottles. Got some honey and rice cakes, which I'll be having before the race and probably have a few rice cakes if I get hungry the night before. Like I said, I am carving up a lot. Coconut water, I might even have this, um, have some tonight and then maybe the rest tomorrow morning while I'm waiting to race. Louis kicks, just because I'll be, um, yeah, going out Sunday night and that. Bananas, I've, I've had these since last week and they're still good, so I'll be taking those down. Yui Boom, get us pumped up in the morning. And that's pretty much it. Main stuff is obviously that running gear that I wanted to show you guys. We've got a few other things, camera gear and just general clothes there. Murphy has gone to sleep, so yeah. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna pack all this stuff up in my suitcase and then we're gonna get ready for the airport. All right guys, Uber is on the way. Just chucked a kit on, black singlet, black kind of cargo shorts. Nothing special, pretty basic. Then we got a fresh pair of kicks on always. Hair and Preston socks, but yeah, we'll see you guys at the airport. Officially checked in to the room. <laughs> now, I didn't book this, guys. Um, yeah, the lovely guys at the marathon have, but it's not too bad. It's gonna do the trick. Two single beds. Would have loved the room with like two big double beds, but it is what it is. Um, it's got the essentials, and um, yeah, that's a little tour. View ain't that great either, but we're here to do one thing, and that's to run a good race. So, flight went all right, and look what we have here. The lucky number 201. Let's go. Just waiting for Jordan. He, got, he came from Brisbane, so he's on another flight. He shouldn't be too long. I'm just eating some fruit. Um, I did bring rice cakes and bananas and stuff like you've seen, but um, might have some of those later. I'm just going to have some of this fruit and then I think we're going to go to dinner anyway. I've had a fair bit of food today, a fair bit of carbs, um, and tonight I'm going to have like a pretty big dinner, but nothing over the top because I don't want to be like waking up in the morning and just feeling really sluggish and full. So a lot of carb loading like the day before and like earlier on today but then I'll have like a dinner and yeah, we, we won't go too crazy. I don't need to be over the top. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get ready. For, well, I'll let you know when Jordan comes. We'll, um, I'll introduce you and then yeah, we're gonna get ready for dinner, head to dinner. Won't be able to have any drinks tonight, but yeah, we'll have a, enjoy a nice dinner and then um, yeah, come back, have an early night rest and get up and the day's finally here. Here he is. Introduce yourself, son. Fucking oh, no, hell, I'm not really good at the camera. Don't worry, mate. Coming here, doing this <laughs> marathon. Let's go, baby. Lads are ready for dinner. What's the kit? What oh, kit we got this, on, mate? This is my. Come on, I'm running this, through this, the this kit. This is my airport kit, brother. It's my airport kit. Hold on, Where's hold that? on, hold on. What? Got, got the Dior's, brother. Uh, give us a look. Let's get into them. You know, they, they got beaten up from uh, Bali. <laughs> Bit of a scooter accident, but you know, nothing that. Um, Nothing that can't be fixed. Something pretty basic. Where are we, where are we going to? Toddies. 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 What, what kind of food they got? Like Italian stuff? Oh, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, I've never been. It's a good butt. Let's Keen. go. Keen. All right, guys. Currently around 10 o'clock, I think. We got back from dinner around an hour ago. And yeah, just had some electrolytes. Um... And that's about it, some magnesium. And now, gonna get about six hours sleep. We're gonna wake up around four o'clock tomorrow morning and then have a coffee, start fueling up, and yeah, get ready for the race. So, time to get some rest.
guys, currently 4.30 in the morning. Just had a shower, having a coffee here. Hopefully make me go to the toilet. My race is until 7 a.m., which is still two and a half hours away, so I'm probably not gonna have something to eat yet. I'll have my coffee, sip on some water, and then about, I think about five o'clock, I'm gonna have um, a meal. I'm gonna have my rice cakes, honey, and banana. And then also, yeah, have some electrolytes and stuff like that, and get that fuel into the body. But yeah, for now, just gonna chill out, get my race bib ready, and finish this coffee. Hopefully go to the toilet, clean the bowels out, and um, yeah, hopefully be ready to go in a few hours. I'm getting picked up from here at 6 a.m., and then we're gonna go over to the start line. I think Blackmore's have got me like a VIP start line right at the front, which is sick. Um, so yeah, should be good. Goal is three hours, under three hours, so I'm, ner I'm pretty nervous. That's how I'm feeling this morning, but also so excited. Um, Hopefully it's going to be a good race. All right, guys, running kit is on. Put the number down below this time. I usually put it up higher, but apparently you're supposed to put it pretty low. So got that there. Got the vapor flies ready. Just about to. I've just made this. We got banana, um, some peanut butter, and some rice cakes. I'm just going to put some honey on that as well. And as you can see there. 516 so we're just over an hour and a half out so I'm gonna smash that down that will be my only food this morning this has got two scoops of Endura in it I got my salt tablets here which I'll be taking those with me in my pocket and we got these two bottles which has got electrolytes Endura um, yeah pretty much and a little bit of pre-workout in there as well for some caffeine so pretty much set ready to go Jordan's just gone he's um He's starting before me, so I'm about to get picked up shortly um, and escorted to the start line. And I think I might be in with the really quick people at the front, which is going to be daunting, but it is what it is. We've got to run our own race. Um, but yeah, we're pretty much nearly ready to go. currently 5.40. Um, I'm going to put the camera away for now. I'm pretty much good to go. I'm going to go down the bottom soon and meet the chick and then yeah, go across and we're going to get started on this race. But um, yeah, I'll see you guys on the other side. I like I said, I think I'm going to take my camera. I'll hopefully grab it off the chick um, at the finish line and then might be able to get a quick bit of footage or she might even be able to film some things. I'm not too sure. But um, yeah, man. I'm nervous, but also excited as hell. So it's time to just leave it all out there, give it my all. And um, yeah, I thank I, I thank you guys so much for always watching these videos and following me on Instagram and stuff like that. Like you guys are literally my biggest motivation now. So anyone that shows me a little bit of support, I love you guys. Um, you're the one of the biggest reasons why I keep doing this stuff. And man, I feel like I got a purpose when I do this stuff. So it keeps me pushing hard. And yeah, 42.2 kilometers. Let's go, sub three. Come on. It's warming up down at the VIP section. Look at these dudes that are running around. I feel out of place here. <laughs> but, um, see the bridge in the background there? Pretty much ideal conditions. And what is it like? Around like 19 degrees or something. I think the max. I think max it's around 15 or 16 yeah. now. Yeah.
Yeah, what is he? What's he wearing? White top. That's the boy right there. Got the boys here. Representing Ralph. <laughs> See, we got our boy. Get that bottle, get that shit. Let's go, Tommy! Bring it home, brother. Let's go, baby. OG, bring her home, bring her home for the boys. You did it, you fucking did it, you fucking did it, you fucking legend. Ben, I'm proud of you, bro. Brad, David, Shane. Let's go. I don't think I've ever played my life. Done. Yeah, 259.31. There we go, guys. First one, and he did it. Well, Sage. It's a PR, <laughs> PR baby. That's good. Show us the medal. Show us the medal. Show us the medal. Let's go. Here we go. Get that little sub three tag on the back of that. And we're done. That's okay. job complete. How's the backdrop? Sydney's complete. Bad, bad. Love to see it. What's next? The boys out here kicking goals, getting it done. <laughs> What is up guys? Um, as you can see, my hair is a bit all over the place, but we're back at the room now. Um, yeah, we did it. We hit a sub three. Um, hope you guys liked a little bit of footage and stuff that we got in there. Um, we're gonna pretty much shower up now, go for some lunch and just chill out for the rest of the day. Um, probably gonna do a proper race recap when I'm home because my legs are absolutely shattered now. But yeah, when I get home, I'll do a full race recap, go through pretty much how the whole race went, went have a have a chat to you guys about literally everything and pretty much let you know what went down what went through my head and yeah but for now we did it baby sub three let's go all right guys i am home it is 9 30 tuesday morning i got home um last night from sydney about nine such an amazing weekend i'm still i don't think it's really hit me yet or it's just like man i just feel so blessed it was such an amazing weekend i want to thank like blackmores and um yeah just the whole event in its whole obviously like i said they they sent me down for this race um i put a lot of high expectations on myself and man it just give me like goosebumps thinking back there was one of the best days of my life it was one of the hardest days of my life and easily the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Like, you guys have seen I've done a lot of half marathons and stuff now at a lot quicker pace than this, but nothing comes close to how hard this was. Like, it was extremely hard. It took every single, I don't think I had anything left um, to give. It was so, so hard, but I got what I went out to try to get and man, it was, um, it was an amazing feeling, one of the best feelings I've ever had in my life, crossing that line or even just running into the harbour, seeing the, the Sydney Opera House, like seeing all those people and everyone cheering and like clapping for the last like kilometre was just amazing, like one of the best feelings ever. Really pushed me hard because like I'll, I'll go through it in a minute, I've got my phone here gonna go through my full Strava my a lot of my splits and pretty much break down how the race went but I was hurting like crazy there was stages in that race where I really felt like I wasn't gonna get that three hour mark I seen the the three hour pacer there was two of them actually 
one guy had a backpack on and on the back of his little camelback it said three hour and then there's also a guy probably 100 or 200 meters back from him that also had three hours as like another pacer but he had a flag on his i think he was more the proper pacer so which is what i thought um, but when i seen that first guy go past with the backpack at around i'm gonna say around 35 kilometers i seen him go past and i couldn't keep up with the little group he was in that was like, I was like, holy shit, there was a million things going through my mind. I was ahead of him the whole race, and then to see him just go past me, I was like, wow, I, I might actually be done here. Um, but as soon as I had a little thought like that in my head, like, I might be done, this might be it, it was just like, the, the switch just flicked again, and I was like, there's no fucking way, I've come all this far, I've done all this training this year, to just give up right now and my body up as i'll go through in a minute my body started cramping like crazy at about 25 kilometers i was pumped i think i had around six or seven gels um i had salt tablets i actually lost my salt tablets at i think around 25 kilometers i was i had the little packet thing open and i was having a couple and I, I, I was trying to do something else at the same time and they all just dropped out literally on the road. I later on when I got when I finished the race I realized that some of them actually went, like fell into my pocket which was super weird because I was running at the time. Um, but yeah, so at about 25 kilometers that just went through my head as I've just lost all my salt tablets but I had those two bottles that were on me and my goal was to pretty much finish those bottles um, before I met up with the boys, my good friend Reed and Jordan, they were at that 25 kilometer mark, um, or just after that. So I knew that they were gonna have a bottle for me ready, which had two scoops of Endura in it, a little bit of pre-workout as well for caffeine, and also extra electrolytes as well. So funny enough, like, yeah, I lose the salt tablets. I get to around 25 k's, and I start to um, I start to cramp. I can feel it like crazy. But let's go back to the start of the race, um, and then let's roll through that. I'll, I'm going to get my splits up right now. So we finished the race. Um, the official time was 2:59:27. Um, it registers a little bit funny on Strava, but um, yeah, that's just. That's just what it says. So yeah, elapsed time was 2.59.31. Moving time was 2.58.47. I did stop to go to the toilet, which took about 30 seconds, but I'm so glad that I did. So let's go to all the splits, if I can find them. Okay, here we go. We got the splits here. I'll, I'll try to put this up on the screen over here as well so we can have a look through it. So I started the race as I usually do, the first kilometre, it's really bunched up. You guys would have seen from the video, there was a lot of people there. Um, I didn't go out as hard as I would usually do because I knew, I was like, I'm not, I don't want to gas it hard here. So first kilometre we got out, it was 3.58. Um, and then once I got settled and I could see that everyone was starting to move away from each other, I um, next kilometre was 4.15, which is in a, was a little bit of a gradual climb over the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And then um, then we started to come down the bridge. And I kind of thought the whole race is like, if I'm getting a downhill, I should, I should probably try bank some seconds there by going a little bit faster. Um, because like, kind of why not? Um, no use kind of backing off when we're going down the hills and then knowing that I'm going to be going slower up hills, and then we're just going to be adding those, that, those seconds onto the time. So there was, a fair, there was a few up and down kind of gradual hills. Throughout the whole race, it was actually a very nice course. I was a bit worried that it was going to be really hilly, but it ended up a really good course. Um, so yeah, we started, we started strong. We got 358, 415, like I said, and then 351, 352, 401. So that was the first five kilometers we had there. And yeah, I think I was sitting about four minute Ks. But like I said, a lot of that uh, was some gradual downhill stuff and I was still feeling very fresh. My heart rate was pretty low as well. Like I was just feeling good all in all. Um, 
my legs were still feeling super fresh. I felt like the taper went really well. I was primed. I was feeling really great for the start of that race. And it pretty much went on for that for the first like 20 kilometers. I think the first 20 kilometers, I was with little little groups for bits and pieces of it, but I was really just like, yeah, this is feeling good because I knew after the 20 kilometer mark and around that hour and a half mark is when your body starts to feel it and that's not what my body's, my body's not used to holding that pace for more than an hour and a half. With a half marathon, I don't really need to fuel much at all. I don't need to drink any water. I never cramp and yeah, an hour 20, hour and a half, I'm sweet. My body's absolutely fine. I can flog it hard and we're all good. But once I hit that 25 kilometer mark, my body was kind of like, oh, we, don't, we don't do this very often. Um, like I said, I also, I'll just go backwards quickly there. I did stop for a quick toilet break at, um, must have been about eight kilometers just because I knew I needed to go to the toilet. I went to the toilet heaps before, but that's because I was just so well hydrated. Um, and yeah, quickly done a piss, took about 30 seconds, um, but felt so much better after that and just got back on the move. Um, and yeah, I was with a lot of different groups uh, um, for the whole race, but all in all, you just have to run your own race. You can't like try keep up with certain people. You can't drop back with groups either. You kind of just have to run your own race. Um, and that's what I did. I was with groups for bits and pieces of it, but all in all, I ran my whole race. So we came into, we ran over the bridge. We went all the way out to Centennial Park. So we got there at about seven, eight kilometers. That was a lot of park running, some gradual hills, nothing crazy, pretty flat, really nice scenery, heaps of people around. The weather was absolutely perfect. I think when we started, it may have been around 13 or 14 degrees. And I think even by the time I finished the race, it was only maybe 17 or 18. It was a perfect day, perfect conditions, sunny, but the course had a lot of shade as well. So. Yeah, we got through those first 20 kilometers very good and then we started to come back into the city still feeling good and like I said I had those salt tablets and I um I I dropped them all they went all over the road. I dropped my bottle actually a couple times which I I picked that back up but those tablets I was like no nah, those tablets are gone. Um it is what it is. I had plenty of gels on me which I just had in my pockets and stuff so it is what it is. I thought that's it. Um I, had, I hit the 25 kilometer mark just as we get back into the city. And that's when I was thinking, oh, the boys are gonna be coming up soon. I need to keep an eye out for them because my plan was finish those two bottles of what I had on my waist um, before I hit them. That had Endura, Endura in it, about 20 grams of carbs in each of those, heaps of sodium and stuff. Um, a little bit of pre-workout, I think, in each of those as well. So. I finished those, I pretty much had those done by the time I seen the boys, but that's when I could really feel like a little cramp coming on and it scared the shit out of me because I knew, remembering back to my 30k race, that was my biggest issue, was like muscle fatigue and cramps and my cardio is just like, which I think what get, gets most people, you build the cardio base, so your cardio base is fine, heart rate staying low. Breathing is just really fluid and perfect, but the legs just, it's a long time to be running on that, for that pace on those legs. So that's where I really started to feel the cramps coming on. And I was like, wow, I was like, it's gonna happen again. Like the same as the 30K race. Everyone says it like at around that 30K mark, you hit like a wall. And I did like, I could see other people starting to stop. Go, I was going past people, but I was also, started to um, drop my time back a little bit. So if I go to 25, so 24 kilometers, I run a four minute split. So that was a lot of downhill. And then 25 kilometers, I run a 425. And I could really feel like something was starting to go on. It was starting to hurt. The next few kilometers, I run a 406, 415, 418, 408 and then the 30th kilometer is when I really start to feel it as I'm looking at it here 30 kilometers I run a 425 31 424 32 432 
33, 440, 34, 424, 35, 425. So my average before was 411 for probably though that first 25 kilometers. And then now I'm looking at my watch, I can see that starting to move up because I'm starting to run a lot slower. And that's when it was really going through my head is I'm like, holy shit, am I gonna bunk out like everyone else does? Like, or like, like what people say, people always say like the race doesn't start till like 30 kilometers. It's like, that was all going through my head is that holy shit, I might actually be done here. I might be, I might be fucked. So a million things going through my mind. I don't listen to music. It was just all my thoughts in my head. And like I mentioned before, this was when that pace had caught up and I was like, holy shit, I might be done here. Like a million things going through, like the whole, a whole year of training and all these visions of me running at the track down the spit all these weekends and stuff it all just flashed through my head within the space of this like two hours to three hours that one hour was going to be the hardest hour probably of my life ever or that i've done so far easily and it was like all right i've got to run 12 kilometers in 50 minutes or I'm not going to get this and it took everything out of me and I hit about 36 kilometers here I run a 421 but I think at around 40 I think at around 36 or 35 is when the three hour pacer with the flag on his head runs past and I'm like holy shit I'm cramping up like crazy my body is just locking up my my quads, hamstrings, calves, both my calves. At one point in particular, I had to stop and stretch out my calf. And then there were stages where I was like hobbling, like I wasn't running fluently because I couldn't place my feet where I usually would because I was worried my calf was going to completely lock up. Um, and I don't know how I just kept the legs moving, but seeing that three hour pacer, ahead of me with the flag that just said three on it it was like something just flicked within me and it was like that dude is 50 meters ahead of you and if you just let him keep on going further further apart it's over, it's done you're not getting this three hours and it like i said it has and at this point, I was pumping gels, like I had no more salt tablets, I was cramping like crazy, so I'm like, I need to keep pumping these gels. I actually got some goo ones from the stands, they tasted like they had a lot more salt and sodium in them, so I'm like, I should maybe try have these instead, and that might help me. I reckon I had like six or seven goos, um, like of those gel packets throughout the race. Um, I had that whole bottle of Endura and stuff. When the boys gave that to me at 25 kilometers, I pretty much scolded it straight away because I'm like, I need to get this in my system right now. Otherwise, I'm going to be fucked. And I did that. We hit that 36 kilometers and I see that three hour pace go past and I'm like, you need to fucking go hard here and keep him in sight. Otherwise, you're done. And... Kilometre 37, we hit a, a 4.13. And I'm looking at my watch, my average is 4.15. I know to get that three hours, I have to keep it under 4.16. And we hit the 4.13, and I'm like, I just said to myself, I'm like, we're fucking back on here. We're back on. And it just flicked in my head, and I just kept him in my sights around 50 metres away. And... um. Kilometre 38, we hit a 416, and same kind of thing. I'm like, we're fucking back here. Yeah. Kilometre 39, we hit a 414. I'm like, let's fucking bring it home. We've got three kilometres left. 40, um, kilometre 40, we hit a 417. I'm still fucking cramping up like crazy. Like, no joke. My feeling absolutely terrible, but... We see that opera house come around the corner. We see the opera house. I know what the finish line's going to look like. I've seen photos of it. You run through the harbour and there's just thousands of people just standing on the sidelines, just cheering and clapping. I heard people like, they see that, th 
the three hour pacer, I seen him at stages start with around 50, he was at around 50 people running with him. Me and him ran over the finish line together and that was it. There was guys scattered up and down but out of that massive group that originally were running with him trying to get a sub three, I was the only one that ended up running across the line with him. It was crazy. So for out kilometer four forty one, we hit a four oh eight. So I'm really just starting to like put the foot down. I'm just like you. It was just all mental at this stage. I'm like, it is so fucking close now. Let's go, let's go hard and bring it home. And at that at that stage, I look at my watch. I think I had about four. I think I had about five minutes to spare. So I know for that last kilometre, I just got to run like a four thirty, something like that, and I'll scrape underneath. Kilometre forty two, we run a four thirty nine, which at this point I'm just running through the crowd, pretty much knowing that I've got it now. I'm just slapping people's hands. I'm just like like in the crowd. They're like, everyone's cheering. One of the best feelings I've ever felt in my life. And I just knew, I was like, I'm going to look up, see that clock, and I'm going to see the boys. I know the boys are going to be looking at that clock, thinking, just, not, just hoping that I cross that finish line before that clock hits that three-hour mark. And I was like, I can't, I can't, um, I can't let anyone down. That was that last kilometers of that race. It was like, you've come this far. There's no way you're going to stop now and let everyone down. Like, it went through my head so many times. Like, oh, 301's okay, 302, anything under 310's okay. But I'm like, why the fuck not under three? Why not? And it's like, when I look back at it now, I'm sitting here and I'm like all comfortable and stuff. But... At the time, that was just insanely hard, and I'm so glad like I pushed through it. Um, and we run that last 0.2 or 200 meters at like 3:56, so I could just see the finish line. And I just pinned it hard, cross the line with that pacer right behind, beside me. I thank that guy so much, absolute legend. He even dropped it back a tiny bit near the end because he knew he was well under, and he kind of said to me, "He's like, come on, mate." He could obviously see I was struggling, and Man, he he pushed me hard at the end there, and that's what their that's what their job here. But I think they might even be volunteers. I'm not too sure, but man, it made such a difference having him here. And even though that last ten kilometers, seeing that three hour thing, it just it just without someone there knowing like me seeing that that's three hours, I don't know if I would have got there. Um, so that made a massive difference. But I ran across the line. You probably see the photos. I was like, see if I can put a photo up here. Pretty much ran across the line, like just looked up and I was like, man, I've done it. Like amazing feeling, beats the feeling of any of those other half marathon races I've ever done. It's been a goal of mine. I said I was going to do a sub three and I don't take that lightly. When I say I'm going to do something though, I fucking go hard and I do everything I can to get it done and hopefully like this video in particular can kind of show you guys like I started running a few years ago only probably taking it serious this year with heart rate training interval training long runs and all that stuff that if you train properly prioritize recovery you don't even have to sacrifice all your muscle like I'm still pushing good weight at the gym at the moment but a lot of this shit is mental as well like if you want to do something if you set out to do something like you need to build a bulletproof mind to the point where you're like we're not gonna fucking take anything less i went into that race i went into that weekend and i was like there's not a hope in hell i'm not walking away this weekend with a sub three marathon like i'm not i'm not going home without it and yeah, I'll, I said to my, I said to any, anyone that asked me, I said, oh, they'll have to drag me off the course before I don't get that sub three. Like, I was going to give it 110% and I did. I left it all out there and we got it. And for any of you guys that watch all these videos and stuff like that, like, you guys are purely one of the biggest motivations I have. Like, anyone that ever messages me, I see every single message. I know when I'm halfway through a race, there's people sitting at home thinking, I hope fucking Tommy gets that sub three. Like, you guys are the absolute best. Um, but, yeah, I appreciate you all. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, 
share it around with anyone if you want if you want to yeah show someone that you yeah just um yeah like comment like if you yeah if you enjoyed the video you found a bit of motivation or something out of it just drop a comment um mean the world to me like like always subscribe show a bit of love and um yeah now i've got to think about what my next goal is um and it's going to be something fun like i just want to keep for me it's just another it's just another thing that i've ticked off and yeah the medal's all good and well i've got it right here but the main thing for me was that time that i'm going to put on the back of here to prove that i can do something that i set my mind to and yeah show you guys that it can be done also while keeping a fair bit of muscle on your body and man I'm going to cut this video off now because I'm just going to keep talking shit, but I appreciate you guys and I'll see you on the next video.